Akua, uh, to our many gods and goddesses, to the higher being, the higher power, the higher force, to that of our Aumakua, our guardians, and Poikahiko, to our ancient ancestors, we thank you. Thank you for bringing us here together at this time. We ask that you draw near to us, that we draw nearer to you. And then uh, your presence surround and shield and protect us at this time. Thank you for all the blessings that you bestow upon us each and every day and in this very moment. We ask that you continue to bless us and our families, wherever they are, whatever they're doing uh, now. We ask uh, for our ancestors to um, be present here with us as well, and that they guide us in the sharing of their knowledge and their wisdom. And uh, we thank them, uh, we honor them for passing this knowledge and wisdom down for our use at this time in our lives. And so we ask uh, that you join us here together in this space through our modern technologies and that we're able to, to share and to grow and to learn uh, with one another. And this is our humble and our simple prayer at this time. And we'd like to send this prayer to you now in flight with a safe and a powerful word. Hey, ah, mama. Hey, ah, mama. Hey, ah, mama. Mahalo, ma. Okie dokie. <clears throat> so we're going to do a little bit of an intro, Joe. Um, you want to kick start us off? Um, so sorry, what in what way? What sort of intro? Just to the session tonight? Yep. Yep. So, um, we for people who are joining today, um, last week was our first cooker cooker, and we um explored the um, essence of aloha and um, today the topic is um, the Hawaiian concept of happiness and um, the three realms of spirit um, yep so welcome everybody and you know what I wanted to ask too is um leading on from our first session with each other were there any questions that came up or anything of of interest that kind of stuck with you and your thoughts um from from that first session or till now that you'd like to explore
Okay, good. Then let's talk about happiness. Okay, so we have a process um, called Ho'oponopono. And how many of you have heard Ho'oponopono? Okay. Oh, good. All right, we got some Ho'oponopono. Okay. So Ho'oponopono is a traditional, good, thanks, Amy. Uh, is a traditional process uh, that our ancestors developed to assist us in making sure that our connection um, to the higher power, the akua, yeah, is free and clear, that our light is shining brightly, and that we are not harboring or carrying or um, or that we, uh, so that we don't have anything blocking that connection. There's a story um, that captures the essence and it also serves as an example of Ho'oponopono. And this story is called the story of the bowl of light. And what this story preserves, what it shares with us is that when we're born, we're born with a perfect bowl of light. And this light allows us to fly with the birds, to swim with the fish, to speak to the wind and to the trees, to do all things in this universe. And we have a tendency as human beings of picking up what our ancestors called pohakus. And pohakus are stones. And every time that we pick up a stone and we place it into our bowl of light, the light will dim because light and stone cannot hold the same space. And we can come to a place in our lives where we have acquired many stones within our bowl that it is said our light no longer shines and that we ourselves become stone. However, it's at that very moment in time in the Mo'olelo in the story that our ancestors also share with us that if we should tire of carrying these stones within our bowl, we simply have to huli, we have to turn the bowl upside down and dump the stones out. This allows our light to shine brightly once again. So that story serves as an example of, of what we are doing in the process of Ho'oponopono. We are going in and we are taking the bowl of light your bowl of light and we're turning it upside down and we're dumping out any stones that may reside within there so that the light can shine again. In this process, in the, in the tradition that I've been trained in, myself and Catherine, um, as well as uh, Joe, is there, is, there are four primary questions that we ask every individual before they enter into Ho'oponopono with us. The very first question is, do you believe in a higher being? The second question, and which is the primary topic, one of the primary topics of today's sharing is, are you happy? The second question, uh, the third question that we have is, do you love yourself unconditionally? And the fourth and final question before we actually pray and go into a session of Ho'oponopono is, do you enter into a session of Ho'oponopono of your own free will? Right. So <clears throat> these four questions are set up in our tradition in order, well, for many different reasons, but primarily, to begin to establish a rapport with the person who's coming. Many a times the people that come to us for Ho'oponopono have never done it before and or are familiar with a, with a, with a form of Ho'oponopono that's not a traditional form, okay? So this big, those four questions begin to really establish for us whether or not we are uh, able to do Ho'oponopono with another individual, particularly that first question, right? Whether or not you believe in a higher being. For us in our tradition, we cannot 
do any kind of healing or spiritual work with another individual if they do not believe in a source of something of energy that is greater than us. So as we move through those, those questions, we're establishing an understanding of who you are, where you're coming from, and, um, and also beginning to assemble what to anticipate when we're going into Ho'oponopono with another person. Now that question of happiness has many different um, layers and levels and understandings to it. The first is there are many different answers that can come to this question, right? And there's no right or wrong answer. It's simply a, an opportunity, uh, once again, to have a better understanding of where you're coming from. And hopefully, in answering that question, begin to understand what's happening in that person's life. Right? So if the answer, for example, is no, I'm not happy, well, great. All right, you came to the right place. You're here for Ho'oponopono. That's what we're going for, okay? <laughs> If the answer is yes, then fantastic, yeah? Um, if the answer is sometimes I'm getting there, uh, I'm happy now or in the moment, but most of the time I'm not, then the answer is still no, right? However, what it does is, again, it, uh, it establishes an understanding and it also brings to, uh, it brings to the forefront a direction. So with the happiness question, some of the other layers that are involved is that the kind of happiness that we're talking about, that our ancestors are talking to us about is a state of being. Right? This is a state of being that can uh, be attained and can be sustained regardless of whether we're having really wonderful experiences in our lives or we're having not so wonderful experiences in our lives. The understanding is that happiness as a state of being should run all the way through, no matter what. The other part about uh, happiness and phrasing it in that question and, uh, and posing that question before we enter into Ho'oponopono is because what it also draws to mind for us as particularly as cultural practitioners, is a period of time. And that period of time for our ancestors is when happiness was all the time. So that's what it brings forward back to us, that this is, it's not just a It's not just a positive thought. That this was something that was and can be, because it was, it can be attained once again. So that's happiness as a state of being. That's happiness in a question. That's happiness in action. And we pose that question at the top of Ho'oponopono in that form because we're not interested in what makes an individual happy. We're interested in whether or not you are. Yeah. Because either way, what that question of happiness also brings to mind is that if the answer is no, then there's change that needs to be made. And the teaching behind happiness is very, very simple for our ancestors. 
And the teaching is, if you find yourself to be unhappy in your lives at any point in time, then there's some sort of change that needs to be made. And if we don't make the change, then we will continue to be unhappy, right? So simple. <laughs> there's a really great book, actually. Um, there's a really great book called Change We Must. And it's by, uh, well, it's by that lady right there, Nana Veri. Um, she's a really wonderful um, Hawaiian. Um, and uh, this is a really, it's a really um, enjoyable read. Oh, Kalena joining. So, and she speaks about many different things. So it's, it's really, it, it captures, it captures the, um, yeah, tons of the spiritual facets of, of her life. So here's what's, here's a little bit of reading that I wanted to do since we're, uh, since we're talking about Ho'oponopono in relation to happiness. Um, here we go. The Hawaiian's great skill as healers also stemmed for their reverence for life. They believed that the body could not respond to any kind of treatment without first being healed mentally and spiritually. Hawaiians always began the process with ho'oponopono, a process of, thing, of putting things right with the whole person. Everything had to be brought out in ho'oponopono because the Hawaiians believed that every word has power. When someone said something unpleasant to a Hawaiian, he would respond, Ho'ino kaua olelo moe. Your words go back and roost on you. Ho'oponopono employs the power of the word to release sickness. And in Ho'oponopono, nobody is above asking for forgiveness, no matter who they are or how spiritual they are. Everyone is forgiven because no one is more spiritual than another. Everyone is equal. With Ho'oponopono, everyone comes together for a meeting of the minds on a spiritual level. And she just goes on and on and on. And it's just, you know what I mean? It, she's just, she does not mess around. Um, and that's one of my favorite photos of her. I just love looking at her. She's so cool. But anyways, that's um, Nana Berry. And uh, it's a pretty easy, accessible book if you like to hunt for it, find it. Change We Must by Nana Berry. So that's the change, yeah? That's the change that she's capturing in the title of her book. And that's a bit of the essence of where it's coming from on a cultural, traditional basis um, in this concept of change. It's the understanding, it's knowing that there was a point in time where our ancestors lived in paradise, where they were happy all the time where they loved unconditionally. There wasn't any separation. There was no disconnect. There was never anything like that. And that as a state of being is what our ancestors attribute to being happy. Yeah. So anytime it's not that, then there's some change that needs to be made. Oh, Mano Molokai. Kumupa Lawrence Aki wants to join in. Awesome. Um, I want to give a moment to um, ask any questions about happiness, or are there any shares or contributions to the topic before we move on? Don't be shy. This makes it a whole lot more interesting and more engaging and more involved that there's actually some back and forth here other than just me as a talking head. <laughs> Aloha everyone. I just thought I'd just, you know, what you've brought up, what's, what you've shared just there, Kavika, is um, I really love so many of these teachings 
you know, alike uh, happiness, like aloha, like pono, some of these other words and describing um, states of being. And that's what they are. They're, they're ways of being, they're ways of living. They're not just a, a mental concept or, or something um, that uh, I suppose in my, in my experience of my Western upbringing was something to achieve in a, an outward sense or in a mental, in a mind sense. It really is just is something that uh, is a way of operating and a way of being and a way of living. And that's what so speaks to me to, about these teachings is, is the, the depths of them. Um, and yeah, the, the simplicity of, of you know, if you're not in those ways of being, if you're not happy, you need to just change something. It's that simple. Yet sometimes the discovery of what that is or the reason why we're not happy can be a little complicated. It's actually very simple once we get to that, that point of recognizing what it is that's, that's uh, keeping us in a state of unhappiness or, or keeping us in a state where we feel uh, disconnected. So, yeah, that's just what I wanted to say. That uh, for me, that's what really uh, enabled me to, to start living uh, these teachings was understanding it's a way of being. Uh, mahalo, Catherine. And would you like to just do a short introduction of who you are? Sure. So I am uh, recently became Kumupa Catherine Roberts. My Kumu or our Kumu is, uh, has his video off right now, but down there at Mana or Molokai is our, our Kumu Lawrence Aki, uh, who is from the uh, island of Halava, or oh, uh, Valley of Halava from the island of Molokai in the Hawaiian Islands. And I'm an Australian woman. I live in New South Wales and I uh, met Kumu Lawrence and Kivika back in 2010. And I've been studying with them uh, since then. And I spent uh, some extended time in the valley. So the valley that uh, Kumu comes from is quite remote and uh, managed to maintain the old ways, the teachings of the lineage um spanning 50 generations at this point or 51 now um and yeah i met him when he first left the valley uh and came out to australia back in 2010 and then i went back and i spent quite uh, an extended period not only in the valley but traveling with them throughout the world to um, assist them in sharing of these teachings and uh so yeah, very much um, part of my everyday life now. Um, and uh, yeah, for me, uh, I like to, uh, one of my things is to try and bring the understandings of these teachings uh, and explain them in a way that a Western mind, Western education, educated mind like I was, can understand and um, allow them to uh, have, uh, an effect on my daily life, on my my living every day. So that's, yeah, that's me. I live in Byron Bay and I've traveled with Kumu Pa'akavika Foster and now Kumu Lawrence. Um, and uh, yeah, looking very, uh, very excited to uh, connect with Norfolk Island and uh, yeah, see you when we come over there next year. Oh, well, that's good. Um... Little intro so everyone knows who who's who, you know. <laughs> um, okay, so back to happiness and state of being and all that shared. Any questions, any contributions, anything that you'd like to, to share or that you're inspired to share? Does anybody want to answer the question? <laughs> <laughs> Okay, then we're going to continue on. We've got three more layers and levels um, to go through here. And we're talking about the realm of spirit. Okay, so 
the realm of spirit, you heard me actually address them in the opening chant. We, that's a chant that I learned from Lawrence, from my Kumu. And that's a chant that I do almost every, before the beginning of almost everything that I do. Yeah. Um, and what it shares with you immediately is the three primary levels of spirit that we're communicating with and that we're addressing, right? So when we chant out the words, in aqua, ke aumakua, ke pue kaiko. I'm addressing for you the three levels of spirit. You also heard me translate those three words that I chanted into the Hawaiian spoken prayer and then the English translation, right? So, na akua, this is the realm we say na because it's plural, right? For us and our ancestors, we worshiped 400,000 gods and goddesses. So this, um, and what I'd also like to share with you is that that's a modern form really of addressing, yeah, the realm of our gods and our goddesses. In the ancient times, we would just speak to them by name. But after the coming of Christianity and the missionaries and it became um, and the abolishment of our traditional temples and the, uh, the, the restructuring of the spoken language, you know, which became the written language, which was uh, essentially English with Hawaiian words, Right. then it became na kua. And however, that's a really nice way of addressing all of our gods and our goddesses. Yeah. It also is all, it's all inclusive in its essence. And it also speaks to the kind of um, the kind of respect that our ancestors were demonstrating for us, right? So for example, they didn't want to be rude, right? So by by utilizing the words na kua, in case there is an akua that I may not be aware of, yeah, that I may not be aware that I'm in the presence of, I'm going to address that which is unseen with the words na kua, so that I don't offend that spirit, that God or that goddess by not addressing them directly when I'm in their presence. For example, <clears throat> you know, we trans, we communicate about things on many different levels all the time. So even take that example of communicating to spirit very vastly, very open, all inclusive. It'd be the same thing as me dropping into this meeting and not addressing all of you. Yeah. But only, for example, just addressing one of you. That's something that um, can be very rude. Also, when we're, when we're talking, for example, here's another, another layer of what I mean. If we're talking and my window's open, right, I, will, I will speak the words, aloha mai kako, 
Aloha mai kako, I'm greeting everyone, seen and unseen. Kako, once again, is all inclusive. In comparison to aloha mai kaua, which would be hello to you and me, right? Or greeting your spirit and my spirit in an enclosed space. Right? So if I'm outside or if my window's open, I'm utilizing the words aloha mai kako because the spirits of my ancestors can hear me, right? The birds can hear me, the trees can hear me, the wind can hear me. And I don't want to be rude to them. <clears throat> this is the same, same layers, same levels, very um, uh, mindful and far reaching, yeah, very broad reaching in understanding with na kua. So na kua, once again, it's ah, the many, akua, yeah, gods, goddesses, those, that higher beings, yeah. So uh, that's one layer, that's one level, yeah, of the realm of spirit, na kua. The second level that we address, again, right off the bat and really regularly, <laughs> you know, consistently, is Aumakua. Yeah. And Ao is like a period of time. It's a, it's a, it's a, yeah, it's a, it's a, you know, it's a segment. Yeah. And Makua is pairing. Right? So these are our guardian spirits. These are our uh, guardian protector spirits. And we have um, very close, intimate relationships with these, uh, with these ancestors. <clears throat> and they can be near or far in generation. Meaning we can have an Aumakua, a guardian spirit, which is seven, eight, nine more generations old. Yeah. Um, or deceased. Yeah. So far or near. Yeah. This could be your grandmother or your parent or a child. Yeah. <clears throat> becomes, uh, enters, passes away, enters into the realm of spirit. You maintain that closeness of relationship with that spirit, yeah, with that individual, with that member of your ohana, and they become a guardian spirit for you. Okay? So you communicate with them, you pray to them, you continue to engage and interact on a spiritual level with them. And they have very um, special roles. Yeah. They can be bearers of signs, right? Uh, what we call ho'elonas. These are signs. Ho'ikes are the revelations that those signs bring forth. But they can present themselves. They can also enter back into the living yeah. through a kino lao, through a body form and can uh, offer guidance and uh, provide answers uh, to some of the questions that we have as we progress through life. So they present themselves um, and, uh, and provide that, that guidance for us. So that's an aumakua. Yeah, that's a guardian spirit. Um, and it's the second level of the realm of spirit that we're talking about. The third level, once again, you hear me speak, you hear us chant it all the time. We speak about it. These are, this is our poe kahiko. Yeah, poe kahiko. People, poe, and 
Kahiko's ancient. So these are our ancient ancestors. And we address them, all of them, because well, again, we're demonstrating our connection to them. And we are continually uh, looking to them for other modes and uh, layers of guidance and presence. So <clears throat> those are the three primary levels of spirit that we really boom, nail on the head almost every, every single time, you know. So any questions about the three layers of spirit? Any contributions, any insights? Can I just ask you, uh, um, Kumu, if uh, are you saying that um, being uh, connected with all these um, spiritual realms is part of what brings happiness into your being. Yes. <laughs> On a personal level, uh, yes. Absolutely. <clears throat> yes, bro. But hey, you know what? Some people have a totally different concept of what happiness is for them. Yeah. So um, I can only speak on, yeah, what I've been taught, what I, what I learned. And, and I can also only speak from a personal level when answering that kind of a question, Brooke. Yeah. The, the spiritual teaching for our ancestors, however, is that we're never, there's never a disconnect even when our minds have been convinced that there, that there is a separation. And that connection goes all the way to the presence, the existence of our family in spirit. Any other contributions, bro? Hello, Mike Ako. Oh, that's Kumu Lawrence dropping in. Hello, everybody. I'm Kumu Pa'a Nui Lawrence Kalainia Kamaniaki from the island of Molokai in Hawaii. Um, very small island. About 7,500 people that lives on this island. Um, I'm not sure, maybe similar to Norfolk Isles, but we don't have any, you know, uh, fast food restaurants. We don't even have street lights here on where I'm from. Um, so it's a very, very small island. Um, so don't know much about, you know, your homelands of Norfolk, uh, except what Joel has shared with us. She seems to love it there on Norfolk Isle. Um, so, um, you know, I'm looking in that of uh, who's here in a tent, a color my me, excuse me, All right? I was late for this particular meeting, but um, I had so many other things that I needed to take care of. So, um, I just, you know, want to get to know, see, here's the thing, everybody. How many can I, can I kind of have, you know, a thumbs up? Yes. Thumbs down? No. How many of you here that I can visualize are actually from 
Norfolk generations, meaning you come from Norfolk for generations. Damon, I see that. Okay, what about yourself, Robin? <clears throat> hmm. Yes. On my um, father's side, yes. Okay, and what about your um yourself, Brooke? Uh, Kumar, um, I, came, I came to Norfolk Island in 2003. Um, my mother has a connection okay. with uh, the young family who were um, uh, <coughs> connected to Pitcairn's Island, but uh, I'm not a direct descendant, although uh, I love being here very much. And uh, we don't have any uh, street lights either, Kumar. <laughs> <laughs> We have one, <laughs> Brooke. One. <laughs> what about yourself, Karen? Um, uh, did you move to Norfolk, uh, or were you uh, you come from generations on the island of Norfolk? No, no I've, I've moved to Norfolk. I have been here since July, and my heart has uh, anchored me here, and. I just feel the calling to to stay here on Norfolk, the energy, the landscape, the seascape, the treescape uh, speaks to my whole being and I feel the calling to be here. Awesome. So, <clears throat> Damon, you have generations um, since your thumbs went out, you know, um, I'm an island person, born and raised on this island, generations on this island for over, you know, 1500 years for that matter, as far as here on this particular island. And if there's anything I know very, very well, us island people, we don't trust anybody who comes from the outside talking to us. <laughs> <laughs> at all you know what i mean <laughs> so i know all of you would appreciate that what i just said you know so i just wanted to make very clear with all of you who i am and how i think all right you know i think exactly like all of you okay if anybody from the outside is coming into my home island and telling me something for me it's like who the hell are you <laughs> right that's the first thing that comes to my mind everybody <laughs> all right so um i'm kind of you know i just walked in uh into this room and i'm watching kabika struggle trying to make a connection with all of you and for me it's very easy to make a connection with island people because we think alike right you know so i just want to kind of get by the way kavika is my first student in 2007 kavika um arrived here to uh, my home island of Moloka, but he's actually you know only about a 30 minute fly originally he was born on the island of Oahu. How many of you here um, that have a visual with me, if you can give me a thumbs up, have any of you been to uh, Hawaii? Do we have a thumbs, anybody at all? Okay, Damon, you've been to Hawaii. Joe's been to Hawaii. Okay. Yeah, so Hawaii consists of actually eight major Hawaiian islands. Um, and of course, tourism is a huge you know economic generative uh, you know boost here in hawaii the island of molokai mm, we you know we can do without it <laughs> as far as the visitors industry but we welcome them anyway because they do generate you know economics here on the island of molokai um you know, you're talking about, and throughout the Hawaiian Islands, you're talking about, you know, 10.5 million visitors that came here in 2019, just before COVID, everybody, all right? We're talking Hawaii as a whole, okay? 10.5 million visitors. 
On the island of Molokai, everybody who were lucky, we had about 40,000 of them, of that 10.5 million in a year's time, right? In 2019. I don't think we even got 60,000, right? Or, or um, 35,000 in the, and that's because we've always relied on ourselves, you know, fishing, hunting, growing our own gardens, you know, that kind of thing, everybody. Um, you know, when COVID hit and everybody was screaming about no toilet papers and no this and no that, you know, grocery stores was going empty. We were having a great time on my island because we were fishing, we were hunting. We just grew a little more carrots and a little more lettuce, right, than usual kind of stuff. So it didn't bother us, but it bothered the rest of the Hawaiian Islands. You know? um, but we made sure we didn't tell people that because we didn't want everybody moving to this island within COVID time period, right? <laughs> you know? And here's the other thing that I can share with you about my home island, everybody. We have one airlines on the island. And the airlines, they they fly nine passenger seat planes. That's what they fly. Nine <laughs> passenger seat planes into Molokai. When COVID hit, uh, an airlines called Ohana Air, which flew 45 passengers at a time, they shut down. And so we had only that one small little plane, all right, that was flying people in our island. Um, and actually, I love the idea, <laughs> you know, and I, I love the idea is because of the fact that, you know, you didn't see too many strangers running around here on the island of Molokai. All right. And I know you guys understand what I'm saying when I say too many strangers, right? you know, kind of thing. So I just wanted to share a little bit with all of you, and I just wanted to kind of lighten up the party. And here's the thing. I'm 65 years old, everybody, okay? I tell you that, right? Because of what I'm looking at my screen. So you and I, we get along pretty well, <laughs> you, know, you know, because, you know, we pretty much have seen life, all right? You know, kind of thing. Mm -hmm. But in any case, everybody, I need to turn this show back to Kumopa Kavika. I just wanted to introduce myself. And as we say in our language, mahalo for listening to me. <laughs> mahalo. Thank you. Yeah, awesome. Okay, so that's the man. That's my man. <clears throat> that's my Kubo. And dropping in, checking in, checking stuff out. And um, hey, look, off the hinges of that, I'm really just going to leave it open. You know, that's the bulk of the share. We were talking about happiness today. We were talking about um, the realm of spirit. And, and it's done. You know, I've, I've shared it. So if there aren't any questions or there aren't any contributions, then, you know, we don't have to extend this any further. Would you all like um, an opportunity to do, oh, go ahead? Who's talking? Sorry, I, I just wanted to say um, thank you to you personally for uh, conducting these sessions because I really enjoy them and uh, it means a lot to me uh, uh, to hear. And so thank you very much, Rika. Really excellent stuff. I'd like to second that. Gonna... Thank you. Thanks, Robin. Thank you, Elodie. Yeah, look. I was just gonna, um, just gonna. I was just gonna say a couple of words about what you shared, Kavika, um, and what it what it means to me, um, because understanding um, what you what you've shared and um, connecting with, um, you know, Naakua, uh, Omakua. Poikihiko, for me, it's um, it has provided a much um, deeper connection with um, with all that is. Instead of feeling sort of like a very small 
um, being, you know, in my world, um, I found that by connecting um, and understanding that all is family, that it really um, expands, um, you know, it, it, ex it expands your connection and, and how you relate to everything. And that interconnectedness, um, you know, has given me a, a sense of belonging and which I didn't uh, understand I, before. And I, I wanted, I searched, but I didn't find it. So, you know, there's a lot of depth in what you're saying. And for me, learning to connect with um, other realms and to relate to the unseen and to start to connect, um, yeah, has really, yeah, just deepened, made a very big difference in my life, how I move in my life um, with what shows up in front of me. And um, yeah, I'm still, I'm still learning, still moving with it, but it, it's, um, it's, it's definitely been a um, deeply connecting um, and it's sort of, uh, it's, for me, it's been, uh, sort of becoming whole, you know, as you uh, include uh, all that is into your into your world. Mm. So, mahalo, mahalo, Joe. Beautiful. Um, would you all like to take an opportunity to? I I know. Um, actually, Thea, is it Thea or Thea? Thea. Thea. Would you like to introduce yourself? She needs to unmute. Oh, sound's not working. Okay, got. I can't get my microphone to work. Ah, uh, shucks. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. Well, next time. All right. And Julian. Oh, Julian. Oh, yeah, yep. Yeah. Okay, Julian's on his phone. And Flynn. Okay. And Jazz and Theo. Well, let's see who else have we got here. Hello. Hello. You want to Hi, say um, <laughs> uh, we are uh, uh, Joe and Brooks children. Um, yeah. Um. Yes. Uh. Louis had last session. Um. It was me and Flynn, the twins. And now I'm here as well. Uh. Yeah. Now we have our younger brother Theo there as well. The three of us. Um, yeah, we're Joe and Brooke's children. Um, we live on Norfolk. We've lived here most of our um, lives. Like 70, 60% of our yeah. lives. Yeah, <laughs> most of the time we're here. Oh, quite a while. Um, so, you know, we're pretty familiar with the island and most of our friends are descendants of, you know, Pitkin Islanders or mutineers um, who came here and settled. So, um yeah we've got a pretty good pretty good general connection to the island and obviously to the teachings through mum she's <laughs> influenced a lot of the mythology i guess into our lives like we uh know a lot about it for second hand from her so that's pretty cool and that's why we said that's yeah why we're here to support her and see what see what it's all about check it out awesome. um but yeah really interesting stuff really cool um like concepts and things to consider so thank you very much for that mm, thank you good to have you guys all three of you in the zone this yet this this week awesome <laughs> um okay there's some uh, we've got some folks joining that are not from norfolk that I think it'd be really nice if you all could introduce yourselves to everyone that's that is from Norfolk. Um, so Raspa, would you like to introduce yourself? Hello, hi everyone. Yes. Um, so I'm 
born in France, but I grew up in Hong Kong. And um, I'm currently in France. And I've been Rasp in Raspa, Raspa, this is Kumu Lawrence. If you have clothes on, then turn your video on, which would be more appropriate. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you don't, <laughs> if you don't have clothes on, just tell us you don't, and we understand. <laughs> tell them I don't have clothes on right now. <laughs> oh, Casper, put some clothes on. <laughs> no, I'm kidding, guys. Anyway, continue on. Yeah, sorry. Um, so I've been studying Hawaiian spirituality with with Kumu. Kalika Foster for almost a year, close to a year, and um, loving it. And one little thing that I've kind of, um, I think I, I, I knew it before, but maybe not enough to, to fully imbibe that I've been reminded recently is um, in, the, in the unconditional love aspect um, being able to love also those people that um, you see things or characteristics that you don't necessarily resonate with. Mm -hmm. And um, what really helped me was to recognize that even though those people um, are manifesting uh, characteristics that you don't um, necessarily agree with, that they too are part of this world and um, are that they you recognizing the spirit within them as well and that has really helped me to um to love them unconditionally again and um i want to thank you for that mm. and uh yeah when when that realization that we are all spirit um is there then for me the the happiness aspect is is very much present and there is no doubt of my connection Mm. Hey, you know, I want to know something. We, um, Uncle Filippo. So, Uncle Filippo is Lawrence's blood uncle and his teacher, right? So, it's <clears throat> he's in his 80s now. Um, but look, he he puts it really simply every, everything that you were just talking about, puts it really simply, and that is that, um, you know, if we focus on the ugly of another person, it makes us more ugly. Hmm. Yeah. So really simple, breaking it down, uncomplicating it all. Um, so, and it ties in really well with this concept of happiness that we've been talking about this evening, right? So if we find ourselves hyper focusing on the things that are unpleasant about another person. It makes us more unpleasant. And it also makes it increasingly difficult to sustain a state of happiness within our own being. Mm. So whatever it is, let it go. <laughs> you know, we, say, we say you know let it go our ancestors are always telling us to let it go and um and another really uh really simple understanding about love unconditionally loving unconditionally and being happy all the time is um you know it boils down to it boils down to uh, the requirement that our ancestors have of us in unconditional love where even if it's your worst enemy, they're loving your worst enemy unconditionally. You don't have to condone what they do, but it is important that we find a way to love them anyways. we're not going to harbor anything that's going to block us or block our connection or block our light. So even if that person is doing some really horrific things, uh, 
to you or to the people that you care and love about in your life. Well, let it go. All of that wraps into the simplicity of don't focus on don't focus on the ugly of another person. Yeah. Uh, you know what? We were talking about this. We were talking about this last um, this last uh, Kuka Kuka. Um, uh, the talk story about um, being the art of being the art of being a conduit uh, for the healing power and basically there can't be anything blocking us and we're not going to allow anyone or anything to create mm -hmm. a, a blockage within us. Mm -hmm. I mean, even those words that I read earlier from the book Change We Must by Nana Viri, right? May your, may your words go back and roost on you, right? We're not going to take any of that stuff on. So if you're coming at us with any kind of curses or you're coming at us with, even with like negative thoughts, yeah. we, there's never, a, our ancestors were never the ones to um, allow that to exist even in the vicinity or the presence of. And if it chanced an opportunity to be present, they sent it back to where it came from. Mm. So, and that speaks on so many different levels of the kind of, the way of thinking, yeah, the way the the seriousness of our words the potency of our actions right so you never our you know it's okay well speaking about the language again right so we just go on and on and on all kinds of different places right <clears throat> But our ancestors, for the same, this is for this very same reason that our ancestors never spoke about anything directly. Everything about our oral language was metaphoric, symbolic. Yeah. Never spoke about anything directly. If, if grandpa was out in the front yard working in his garden and well, grandma and grandpa were out in the front yard working in working in their garden and grandma saw grandpa stand up and look at something coming down the dirt path and then later on grandma was like hey grandpa what did you see right. he's gonna say something like oh i saw i saw a bunch of of wildflowers blowing in the wind instead of saying Oh, I was checking out the school kids crossing the street. Right? So that's the kind of, that's where they were yeah. in their minds, in their thoughts, in their understandings about how things operated on a spiritual level in this realm of existence. And they crafted their language around that to support it. So, I don't know. Never spoke about anything directly. Never said anything that could be any way, you know, we have this, Lauren, okay. <laughs> we have this other saying. We have this other saying, and you might have one similar to it on, on Molokai, but I mean, on uh, Norfolk. Um, but there's a, it's this, it's kuli kuli kua, e hanapa kua, he moi pipiao, maka ala keea. 
close your mouth, shut your mouth, open your ears, and pay attention with your eyes. That's what those phrases translate to me. And uh, for this reason, uh, our ancestors spent a lot of their time in silence. Mm -hmm. And in silence, you don't have to think because you know. And that's the difference. So all of the questions go away of who, what, when, where, why, how. And instead, it goes back to what it is. What do you see? What do you smell? What do you taste? What do you hear? What do you feel? What do you touch? What did grandpa do? What did grandma do? What are they doing now? Where are they going? And all of that is being observed. All of that's engaged. All of that's being interacted with all the time. So you, that you don't have to ask the question, why, when, where, how? <laughs> it's like, oh, here's another story. So grandpa's getting ready to go fishing, right? So he's packing up his canoe, he's getting all of his gear together, loaded up, he's in his canoe, his grandchild, right, on the lanai, on the veranda, on his veranda, yells out to grandpa, hey, grandpa, are you going fishing right now? <laughs> grandpa is going to immediately start unloading his canoe. Why? Because his grandchild just let everyone and everything know what he's up to. Right? Just spoke it out loud. <laughs> and a totally unnecessarily, right? Because you see what I'm doing. Right? You see me packing up my canoe. What other reason do I have to pack up my canoe? <laughs> you know? So it's again, it speaks to the power of words, to the to the consciousness that to the mindfulness that they were operating with, you know. So you just let everyone out, the grandchild just let everyone else know. And the everyone else is what we call the kolohe, right? So the kolohe is those mischievous spirits, right? It's those mischievous spirits. So now. Now that the grandchild's spoken it out, yeah, yelled it out across the across the yard to his grandpa, you know, what he's up to, right? Grandpa's unpacking his canoe because he knows now, yeah, that everyone else, including the mischievous ones, know, and there aren't gonna be any fish. There aren't gonna be any fish. <laughs> so he unpacks his canoe. That's one layer, that's one level. Uh, of thinking and understanding. Remember earlier I said, hey, we talk about things on all different levels all the time. Yeah. So that's on a spiritual level, right? The mischievous ones. On the physical level, on the literal level, right? You have your land districts. You have your kuleana lands. You have your family lands in an ahupuaha, in a land district. You have them next to each other, yeah? Divided by a rock wall, yeah? A stone rock wall placed. Yeah. So grandpa yeah, starts unloading his canoe because you just let his brother know yeah, that lives on the other side of that rock wall. Yeah. <laughs> and maybe his brother isn't isn't always the one that's uh, you know, the, the brother is the the brother is the kolohe one, right? The mischievous one. He's the one sucking up his beer, hanging out on his veranda, waiting to the last moment, checking on his brother to see what he's up to. You know what I mean? And you know, and and grandpa, he's got his canoe. You know, he's got his 
stuff on point. You know what I mean? He's got it behind the coconut trees where he knows brother can't see it from his veranda. Da 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 da. So they're doing. You know what I mean? That's how it goes. But if the grandchild just yelled it out, well, shucks, you just let your uncle know. You just let my brother know, and he's gonna beat me. You know? He's gonna he's gonna load up his canoe and get out there before I get out there. So all that kind of stuff all the time. So anyway, I don't know how I got off on that tangent, but I guess it was, oh yeah, I guess it had something to do with words and don't focus on the ugly. Anything else before we wrap it up, folks? Thank you. Kalena, did you want to say hello to everyone? Hello, uh, oh. everybody. I'm um, neighbors with everybody. I didn't know where Norfolk Island was and I had to go look it up, not gonna lie. <laughs> but I'm in New Zealand, so good to be here. Thanks for letting me drop in. Good to see you, glad you're here. Welcome. <laughs> and uh, we got Christina Martin, did you want to say hello to everyone? Why not? <laughs> Aloha. Ma kau kau. <laughs> um, I usually just sit here very quietly. Um, I live um, in Victoria, in Australia, and I have been following stalking um listening okay. <laughs> and um learning um the teachings from molokai through kavika to start with um and and then including kumu lawrence uh since 2014 i met them both in 2010 <laughs> And then it went quiet for a while and then suddenly I got an email and it all started up and I got right into it. So I'm so happy to have been blessed with um, the knowledge and the concepts of the foundations because it's what I live upon. It's my life. And I now share with everybody that I meet <laughs> as much as I can. Um, I've just um, quoted you on a couple of things on Facebook, Kavika. So I will acknowledge you on that. A couple of things that you said. So I've posted a couple of things. So it's just so beautiful. This all makes sense. Mahalo, thank you. Mahalo. You know, it just makes me think of that, you know, that's so island style, you know what I mean? That's so island the kind when you're, when you're, <laughs> you live in close proximity to each other. Everyone knows everybody. And it's like, you know, you're just mindful. It just goes with the terrain, just because goes with the, you know. Hey, everyone. You know, on the island of Molokai, we have a t-shirt that says, basically what the t-shirt say is, what happens on Molokai, everybody already know. That's how big the island is, everybody. <laughs> hey, let me repeat myself. The t-shirt says, what happens on Molokai, everybody already know. 
<laughs> that's how that's how big this island is. It's a very, very small island. You don't get away with anything here on this island, everybody. Okay. What I saw, I do have I bought the t-shirt. I just love the t-shirt because it's so true. Yeah. There's nothing you can hide from the people on Molokai. You know, they all know the story already, right? And here's the thing. Um, technology has just simplified things for Molokai people. So the island is 50 miles, excuse me. Yes, 50 miles long from west to east, everybody. It's 10 miles wide, all right, from south to north. So on Molokai, you know, right in the center of the island is the main town of Kaunakakai. So the police car, Ambul uh, ambulance, fire trucks, all come out from the main town of Kaunakakai. And what you see on Facebook, right, everybody? Because there's a page on Facebook called What's Happening on Molokai. So what you do is you go on What's Happening Molokai, all right? So the person that's down the road, you know, about four miles from me, five miles from me, he'll say, hey, Ambulance, you know, um, they had a police car and they had a fire truck all headed east. So I know he's, it's coming my way. Everybody follow me? Then the person about a mile later who is, you know, um, from an uh, area called Makapu Paia, they'll write, right, on that, on that page, they just passed Makapu Paia. Okay, so now we know they're going further east, right? So that when they get to this location of Cabela, someone from this place of Cabela will write in that of Facebook, well, they just passed, you know, that of Cabela. But all of a sudden, you know, then somebody from Kamalo, 20 minutes later, 15 minutes later, well, they haven't gone past Kamalo. So that means they stopped between Cabela and come along and in between there is where <laughs> all the action is taking place. Everybody follow me what I'm saying? All right, that's how small this island is, everybody. All right, that's how we all get the scoops on this island. All right, we just go on to that uh, Facebook, onto what's happening on Molokai and we know exactly what's going on on Molokai, everybody. I just wanted to share that with everyone. You know, that's, that's so funny. It's so funny because you say okay, everybody look. So a uh, couple months ago, like a month ago, really, um, Lawrence and I was talking, and we were talking about how word gets around on Molokai, right? And I won't go into the whole big background story, but essentially, it had to do with a death, right? And um, well, anyways. I called Lawrence up. I was like, Lawrence, I was like, are you sitting down? <laughs> he, said, he, said, he said, yes, yes, I'm sitting down. But anyway, I, I told him what it was, right? I told him what was going on. And, it, and he said, he said, well, Kavika, you know, I've died three times on this island already. <laughs> 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 which is true everybody which is true you know because <laughs> over here it's like so we have this uh friend you know that dances uh who or was dancing hula with my wife so she comes over here i'm sitting on my lanai and her eyes is so big you know and it's like so i said what's happening sue and she says Oh, Lawrence, I just, I just heard in church that you died. So I came here to support Kiri and your <laughs> wife. <laughs> and, I, and I said to her, well, it's obvious I'm sitting here on this lanai or on this porch, straight that I didn't die. I said, it's interesting that your church said that. And then I found out later, you know, I actually, um, another uh, older guy by the name of See, my name is Lawrence Aki. The guy that died was uh, Lawrence Kalili Kani. And she thought they were talking about me, everybody. All right. So 
Um, I'm in the main town. See, I rarely ever go into the main town of Kauna Kakai. Um, and my wife is the one that does all the shopping, checks the mail, all of that. All right. So one day I'm in the main town of Kauna Kakai and I'm with my wife. So my wife walks into the post office, small little post office. But it's obvious to me now, I kind of understand you guys have a much smaller island than I do. But in any case, all right. Um, so I'm sitting in a car waiting for my wife and this woman comes up and she's walking on the sidewalk and she sees me see, sitting in a car and she comes up and she hugs me. You know, Oh my God, Lauren, I thought you died. <laughs> and I was like, where the heck did you hear that from? Oh, I was talking to so and so who told me that you had passed away, you know. <laughs> so that was the second time. And there was also a third time, everybody. And I'm talking about different times, different places, and not, not from the same church that they're hearing the story. So Molokai is famous for that, everybody. Okay. You know, you're you're dead before you know it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know what I'm going. And Uncle Filippo always, you know, he's always talking about. Well, you and Uncle Filippo all the time. But when we get into Halava, there's no reception, right? There's no electricity. There's no reception. There's no modern conveniences, right? You're living straight up the land. So, Uncle Filippo, we we'd have to Lawrence and I, we'd have to we'd have to hop in the car. We have to go up to the top of the hill, top of what we call this lookout. Yeah, uh, at Pool Hoku, at the, the, the Hill of the Stars, where you can see, uh, where you can get reception, right? Cell phone reception. So that's, it's also the meeting place. So you get up there and you get on your cell phone and you do your, you do whatever it is that you need to do. But uh, Uncle Felipe always talking about, you know, he said, okay, he said, okay, I'm, you know, I'm going in, I'm going down. And he said, you have to contact me by the coconut wireless from now on. <laughs> coconut wireless. <laughs> coconut wireless. Man. Now, with all that laughter, and it's a really good thing. I love it. But look, here's what this is really talking to us about, right? This is how, this is how sensory perceptive our ancestors were. This is, when we talk about Ho'ailonas, yeah, I mentioned Ho'ailonas earlier, yeah, the signs and the Ho'ikes, the revelations of those signs. This is how our ancestors were communicating, right? This is how we communicate, right? <laughs> this is how this is how we're doing it, right? It's it's telepathic, it's energetic, it's it's you know, it's what the clouds are saying. It's what the what the ocean is saying. It's what the wind is saying. This is, these are all related to us. This is this is our ohana. This is our family, and it, the word gets around, right? Um, and communication is happening all the time. <clears throat> so. Old school, right? Old school time, and still, when 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 Lawrence and I and Uncle Filippo, we were we were all living in the in the Valley of Halava. Um, we do all of our communicating by conch shell, right? We had a whole system of 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 blows, you know, sounds. No telephone, no nothing, just conch shell. Yeah. Four, four, four conch shell blows. Oh, somebody's he's coming into the he's coming into Halaba. Right. Three successive, really fast ones, two, 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 come eat. <laughs> you know, come get some food. You know, Andy Diane made pineapple upside down cake, you know, <laughs> kind of thing. So, but there was a whole, it's, it just speaks of the different ways of communicating that are available to us. Yeah. Other than just with our, with our waha, with our mouth and our words. Yeah. That, you know, we're listening and, 
and and really listening, you know, and, <clears throat> and watching things, everything. So anyway, that's really the last little bit that I wanted to 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 impart before we go about the rest of our day uh, or business of our days. I want to uh, thank you all for coming again. This is the second one and I really enjoyed it. <laughs> a little bit of a little bit of a slow start, but hey, we got it got into it. Oh God, Lawrence was so good to drop in. I want to thank my Kumu for being here. I want to thank Kumu Catherine for being here. And of course, all of you. Yeah, thank you so much. This is, you know, it's a continued pleasure. Ju uh, Joe, any closing words? I just want to say, you know, thank you, Kavika and Catherine and Kumu Lawrence, you know, for all your sharing, beautiful. And um, yeah, the next one would be on the 8th of November in two weeks time. So um, beautiful. Mahalo everybody and um, see you next time. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Aho -e ho. Mahalo, aho -e ho. Mahalo. Leo. Okay, <laughs> we're gonna shut it down now. Thank you guys for being here. Thank Thank you. Before you go. Bye. See you guys, Damien. Bye. Do, do you not um do you not when you finish do a prayer as well to finish to close the, the session? Are you open it with a prayer, but you, you don't close it with a prayer or a blessing? Not in talks. But that's a really good one. You know what I mean? You got the thumbs up from Mike Kumu. Absolutely. Would you like to close with a prayer? Yeah, sure. Would you like to give it? Uh, yeah, I can give one. Sure. Awesome. awesome. This is this is a this is a chant that we do for um, for blessing the, the canoes and when people go out and come back. But this is written by a good friend of mine on Ta'a in Tahiti, and he wrote it for us on Norfolk. E tumato, e tumato to e e te rahi tu e tini tini, tahiti mai e te atu e e te ri e tumato e te ri ora e ya. Ue pa oroe ai mato ia tu mato te e piai e te roku inu a pa oroe ai mato e te otafare umai ai te pa ari umai te puai umai e te pa ororo O oe oe tomato tiai oe tomato artai oe oe tomato pa roro pa roro he ma roro ro he ti atua e ma 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 well done Damien mahalo thank you Damien. That was awesome. Yeah. So the English translation? Yeah. Our, our God of the 10th sky, listen to us, God. Let our crossing be safe, a living crossing. Don't abandon us. Protect us from all danger. Bring us back home. Give us strength. Give us wisdom. Give us protection. You are our guardian. You are our guide. You are our protector. Thank you. Mm. Mahalo. Mahalo. Yeah. Yeah, Mama. All right. Everybody, we'll see you in two weeks' time. Mahui ho.
Ahoy ho, everybody. Take care, everyone. Ahoy ho.